Hey y'all, I'm back here again today with another bead video. Now this is one that I have never shown, but I've been making for a long time, and they are super duper simple. So let me show you what I've done. This is an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of scrapbook paper that came out of, I don't know, this little set right here. It's got like, um, Valentine's Day, birthday, St. Patty's Day, Easter, you know, all those kind of holidays in here. And I've taken out, I think, all the Christmas stuff because that's what I made some of my stars out of. All right, so there's that. So I have this piece that's, I don't know, can you see? Well, the light. It's X's and O's. Oh, there you go. X's and O's. And then I took another piece that's little hearts. And I wanted... Why am I yelling? <laughs> Sorry. I wanted uh, contrasting paper because I want you to be able to see what's happening while I do the bead. So all I've done is, now I've already finished this one, I took a ruler and measured half an inch on this side, flipped it over, made it half an inch, and then made the strips, went here, you know, did the strips, went there, moved the strip, back and forth, back and forth. I'm only halfway through this one, but I'm going to go ahead and cut what I need out of here. So I'm going to cut. Uh, I think I'm going to cut two from here. So in case I need to do the bead twice, I'm ready. So here are the two light pink ones, which, by the way, I am not a fan of pink. But I don't know why I picked them. <laughs> I just don't know why. All right, so there is one two all right so we need one dark one light one dark one light so this is how it goes let me find my glue take that off and get ready okay so these are called puffy beads or you can refer to them as square beads and I'll show you what I'm talking about as we get closer to the end so you need some glue you start with the these are half inch start with the half inch side first take the other half inch and glue them very close to each other but still have a tiny a little tiny gap in between the edges there. All right, so kind of press down a little bit. And then you're going to fold the bead underneath. But what you need to do, well, maybe you shouldn't fold it underneath first. Let's just do it this way. When you fold it, mash it down so that there is a small gap between the light pink and the dark pink, just like you have on this side. Don't make them pile one on top of the other so the edges meet you need just a little gap right so there's that and then you fold it you know fold it over to the opposite side now you're going to do the light pink one and you're going to do it the same way you're going to leave a little tiny gap it's better to do it from the front so you can see it much better leave a little tiny gap there and then all you're going to do is rotate so you see you have pink on the side so you use the dark pink and center it you know it's not a straight line so you need to center center it in the middle of the square right here then this one goes in the middle then you flip it over and then this one goes back so basically you're doing the, a crisscross thing on both sides flip it since, since this is a light pink then you go with the dark first now you got the dark you do the light now you have the light here, so you do the dark, and you just keep folding it, but you make sure that this is in the middle. Because as you're going to be able to tell in a minute, there is a pattern emerging. Keep going, and it's going to get more and more obvious as you go. Just keep folding and folding and folding. Sometimes I forget which one's on what side, and I have to look, and I'm like, oh, it was on the other side. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the dark one. <laughs> Can you see the pattern that's emerging? See how it's going sloping down? And then this side is the opposite. Okay, so what do we got here? We have to do the light pink in the middle, 
do the dark, flip it over, pink, make sure it's in the middle. And just give it a little mash with your thumb, no bone folder needed, just a little pressure from your fingers. Don't want to get really mash crazy. I forgot to say in yesterday's video that Mary from Mary LTA is the one who asked me to do the star beads. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is, because it's getting a little more tricky, I'm going to peel this one back so it's on the back side, the white side. I'm going to take a little bit of my glue. When I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Just a little dot, just right there. You know, not going all the way up yet. So then we do this one and this one. It's for stability because it's getting a little more tricky. The smaller it gets, the trickier it gets to do it. It's a little fumbly. I have long fingernails now again, so it's a little fumbly for me. All right, so now we do this one and then the light pink. And then we do the dark and the light pink. All right, now you're running out. See, we're down to the bottom, to the back of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take glue and run it down, maybe, down the pink, flip it over. Whoop, nope, I should have done the dark one first. It's on the bottom. So I'm going to do the dark guy first. Oh, well, okay. Do it this way. Whoops, I'm getting glue all over the place, which is typical for me. Make sure he's in the middle because it'll mess up your pattern if he's not directly in the middle. Let me do this again. There we go. And then I'm just going to pinch off that last piece of paper there because it doesn't really matter. This one, I'm going to keep going till the very end right there and then I'll cut it off. So I'm going to a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue here. And then I'm just going to take my scissors, the manhandlers, <laughs> clip them off. And then you've got this on one side and that on the other. See? Isn't that cool? All right. So the trick is we're going to be doing some mashing again. Now, you could leave this bead. You could just take, we're doing the two-finger method. Let me back you out so I don't mess you up there. All right. So the doing the two-finger thing. But this time you have it, you know, all the corners covered because there's only four sides. So you take them and you mash just a hair. And what you're going to get is a puffed up bead. It'll be more dimensional. And you can leave it that way. Or I get carried away and then I take it and I mash it more. And when I mash it, I get myself a square bead. It's a square bead. Cool, huh? All right, so I want to put these on a garland. So what I, I'm going to show you this with a toothpick because I don't have my needle handy. So what I will do, I will take with my needle like I, I showed in the star video. There are holes in all four corners. Remember how you didn't make them lay one, the paper lay one on top of the other and you left a little gap? Well, that's where the hole is. So you take your toothpick and it may take you a few minutes to needle it. You might have to mash it back down a little bit. When you mash it flat, you can see where the holes are much better. So you take it and run it from one hole to the other. Now I'm going to puff it up again while it's on the toothpick. And make it, make it, oh, come on, focus, focus. Make it square again. I'm trying to show you all sides of it so you believe me when I tell you it's square. Or if you don't like it square, you can make it flat and it's kind of a puffy bead that's square shaped. So either way, you get a lot of use out of this pattern. So you just mash it, and there you go. I have sealed these with the Mod Podge, with, you know, my purple Mod Podge. I have sealed them with that. Uh, hang on a second, let me go get the board that has it on there. Okay, I forgot, I took them off the board. I did three coats 
bond each one of these. Let me move you in further, closer. I did three coats of Mod Podge. Now listen closely. They're nice and hard. And they'll hold up to a little bit of wear and tear. You go to mash them. They don't mash quite as easily as the ones that have no coating on them. But you can put Mod Podge on them. You just have to do it like you did the stars, or like I did this one. When you coat it with the with the sealant, put it on the toothpick like this, or the head of a pin, whatever you guys method you use. If you use the dip, you'll go like diagonally through it for the line. And then just brush it on all the sides and then put it in the board and that's it. And it doesn't take long for these to dry. They dry very quickly. So it's not, well, where I live. <laughs> They're, they're not hard to make at all. I mean, it's just, just folding back and forth. And see, I made this one a little bit bigger than I did the pink one. I think this one was a three-quarter of an inch and not a half inch. This one's a half inch. This one, I think, is a three-quarter inch. And I did all three of these guys as a three-quarter inch, I think, is what I did. Well, let me find the hole again. Yeah, these are much bigger, and so is this one. Oh, uh, well, is this one about the same? And this one might, I think, this one's about the same size as the pink one. I don't know, is it? Yeah, it's a little smaller than the other ones, but there you go. So there's the square bead. Like I said, you can use it as a puffy bead. Some people use them as a puffy bead. They just leave them flat, and they're a little bit puffy, as opposed to flat, flat when you finished it. Just give it a little pooch. And you can have kind of a semi-square puffy bead, or you can go nuts like I did and mash it and make it a total square. Cool, huh? So you can put this on your, your uh, garlands. Like if you're doing, doing the stars, you can do stars and then a puffy bead, a star and then the puffy bead. That would look really nice. I think that would look very cool. Or if you're going to make something in red, white, and blue, you have a different shape for all three of the colors. One color would be the white white stars. This could be blue. And you can have some other kind of bead, a regular bead, as the red. That way it looks like a flag. So there you go. There's the easy bead right there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it one more time, but I'm not going to really talk a lot through it. Let's see. Well, you know, I can't help it. All right. Let's do this one real quick. Did I do the pink on top last time? I can't remember. A little bit of glue. There we go. And then I'm going to wrap it around and give it a little more edge. Wrap it around here. go. Alrighty. Time to start. If you start going too fast, sometimes you get your stuff out of alignment and it's not going to work as well. I get carried away. Alright, so I'm going to do a little bit of glue just to make sure it stays secure just on the ends right there towards the, towards the folding of the bead. Alright, so we do pink dark red. I'm going to do dark red into pink. And I think that I've come to the end of the road. So I'm going to do my glue all the way up the sides. All right, so which one are we doing now? Well, we're doing the dark red, uh, dark pink, the red, light pink. I'm going to flip it over and do the light pink 
and then the red. And then I'm just going to cut this off. Okay. You could wait and let the glue dry, but, you know, I have no patience, so. All right, so there it is, flat. It has a little bit of texture. This is what it looks like when it's flat on the toothpick. Let me find my little hole there. Oh, this one's easier. Got to puff it up a little bit to get in that hole. All right, so there you go with it flat. It's got a little puffy to it. It's, it's got a nice pattern. Or you can mash it and make it a little box. Well, stinkers. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to puff it back up again to a square before I seal it. So there you go. There is a puffy bead or a square bead, whatever your preference is. This bead is a twofer. See you later. Bye.